Okay, so I would like to introduce our speaker tonight. This is Ms. Andrea Flores. She is the uh, Program Director of Recruitment. She has a much longer title than that, but we'll go with uh, Program Director of Recruitment. And at this time, I'm going to turn things over to Andrea. Thank you for being here. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Can everyone see my screen okay? The FSC screen? Awesome. Okay. Um, so thank you all again so much for being here. My name is Andrea Flores. Um, I oversee all of the recruitment and community outreach efforts um, here at Florida State University. I am also a proud alumni of FSU. Um, I was a first generation college student. Um, I'm currently pursuing my doctoral degree here at FSU. So I have blood, garnet, and gold for quite some time. Um, I love this school. I love what we're all about. And I'm very excited to be able to share some information with you guys this, this evening. Um, so um, like Jody said, um, I'll cover lots of things. We're going to talk primarily about the application process, kind of what we look for in our applicants. We're going to talk about the logistics, the dates and the deadlines and how you do it and what we need and all of that good stuff. Um, and then I'll touch briefly on um, some financial aid and scholarships. Um, I will also talk a little bit about like housing, um, dining, student life, all of that good stuff as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and just jump right in. Let's see, there we go. Um, so FSU guys, uh, we are located in Tallahassee, Florida. We are currently ranked in the top 25 of the best public institutions in the entire country. And while that is something that we are incredibly proud of and, and lots of different things really play into us being able to achieve that, Two things that I want to highlight for you all this evening are going to be our retention rate and our student to faculty ratio. Um, so currently our retention rate is at a 96%. And what that means is that students not only come to Florida State, but they stay at Florida State, right? Um, we have a ton of support services, especially in that first year on campus to really help students find their footing, find their groove, um, whether it's help that they need in academics, whether it's assistance with finding um, professional opportunities like internships um, and different uh, hands-on research opportunities, um, whether it's that social and emotional piece, right? And just really helping them with that transition into college, right? And being on your own and living in a new place and all of those types of things. Um, so FSU really seeks to support the whole student. Um, and especially in that first year on campus, we're going to make sure that you know about all of the resources that are available to you um, and waiting for you uh, on campus. We're a big, big school. We have over 43,000 students on our campus. And with that is going to come lots of options. Um, so we offer over 270 different academic and professional degree programs. There is literally something for everybody at FSU. Um, that website that you see at the very bottom of the screen, that academic slash guide.fsu.edu, is essentially going to get you to a clickable list of all 270 of those majors. Um, so it's a really great resource for you to go in, get a feel for um, what types of programs we offer, um, compare programs side by side. You'll be able to see a full description of the program, and you will also be able to see um, a sample uh, course schedule, um, some prerequisite courses that are required. Just get a really good idea of kind of the day-to-day -day of a specific program. Now, I know many of you on this call may be interested in going that pre-med route. Um, and at Florida State, we do not have like a one pre-med track, if you will. Um, we do what's called an advising model, which means that we have a whole pre-med advising team that's going to work with you to make sure that you have all of the prerequisites that you need and all of the experiences that you need in order to apply to medical school. Um, so you can major in anything that you want. Um, you pick whatever major is most interesting to you, and then we will pair you with that pre-med advisor and they will make sure that you have everything that you need. All right, so let's jump into the application process. Um, these are our dates and deadlines for this year. And so our first deadline coming up on October 15th is going to be an early action deadline for our Florida residents. All of you guys live in Florida, and so you are all absolutely eligible to apply in this first group. Our early action deadline is non-binding, so you're not locked into anything. If you are admitted under this group, you are not um, having, you don't have to come to Florida State. You still have until May 1st of your senior year to commit to us, to let us know um, whether you're going to come or not. You're just going to get your decision a lot earlier, which is really nice and helps planning and all of that good stuff. Um, so the way that it's going to work for us, um, if you do decide to apply to that early action deadline, um, you'll apply by October 15th. 
We'll need all the materials and we'll talk about what those materials are in just a second by October 22nd. So you'll have about an additional week to submit those. Um, the main reason why students want to wait to apply is because of test scores. Um, so I hear that a lot, that they want to continue to test. They want to try to get their test scores up as high as possible. Um, and so what we've kind of set up in this process is that as long as you submit a test score, one test score by October 15th, you can actually update all of your test scores until December 1st. So if you're testing in October or testing in November, know that you can still apply to that early action group, update those new scores, and we're still going to consider those in the early action group. You'll still get your decision on December 12th. Okay. Um, and we release all of our decisions on the same date. So you're not having to go in and check and see if, um, you know, when your, your emails and things like that, um, you'll know that on December 12th, you'll be able to log into your checklist, which I will show you how to get to in just a sec. Um, and you'll be able to see your decision there. If you're not quite ready to apply by October 15th, that is okay. Um, we do have our regular decision deadline for all students that is, op um, that is December 1st. So it'll give you a little bit more time to be able to um, kind of get all your ducks in a row. If you need some additional time for testing, you do have until January 1st to update those test scores. Um, so it's a good option for some students. Um, and then those students will get their decision on February 13th. Um, I do not recommend applying to FSU past December 1st. Um, I will tell you that we get about 79,000 applications every year. Um, and the vast majority of the spots in our freshman class are filled in that early action and regular decision group. Um, so I highly, highly recommend that you are not applying later than December 1st. Um, after that point, it's going to become kind of a space available type thing. Um, and I can almost guarantee you there's not going to be a lot of space available. So definitely shoot for that December 1st deadline, October 15th, even better if you can. All right. So how do you do it? How do you apply? Um, we have two ways for you to do it uh, here this year. Um, we utilize the Common App. And so you're able to apply to us via the Common App. You're also able to apply to us directly on our website. We have no preference how you do it. Um, we just ask that you select the one that's going to be most efficient for you, right? So if you're applying to lots of other schools that take the Common App and you um, want to go ahead and use that, you can absolutely do that. If you just want to apply directly to FSU, you can do that too. Um, looks exactly the same on our end, to be completely honest. And so we have no preference. Um, this year, we kind of changed to the way that we are um, asking you to tell us when you want to start at FSU. Um, so in the past few years, we've had this policy that says, you tell us if you want to start in the summertime or if you want to start in the fall. Um, and whatever you put on your application is the only term that we are going to consider you for. That's going to change this year. Thankfully, I'm very, very happy about this change. Um, but basically, you're going to tell us all of the terms that you are interested in applying to FSU. So if you want to start in the fall at FSU and that is it, that's the only time that you want to start, you know, other than that, you're not interested, totally cool. You can put that on your application. But if you're one of those students that's like, I just want to be at FSU, right? I just want to come to FSU, whatever opportunity, however I get there, um, I just want to be here. Mark every single one of those options or, you know, several of them. Um, it gives us opportunities to be able to offer you different pathways and different ways to come into the institution. We have 79,000 applications, like I mentioned, and there are many students that get denied or get deferred that would do just fine at Florida State, right? Um, there's nothing actually wrong with the application or anything concerning about the application. It's just a matter of space. And so when you're giving us all of these other terms to look at you for and all of these other programs to look at you for, it allows us to spread out our class and give the most students offers for admission. Um, so you will see that on your application. Definitely go through, read through the different options um, for programs um, and select anything that you're interested there. And then you're going to submit your application. Now, Common App gives you confetti and does all of this fun stuff, but that is not the end. Um, you're going to submit your application and there's a whole other step after that. So I highly recommend that you are submitting that application well ahead of our posted deadlines. Um, so if you're trying to, for that early action group, well ahead of October 15th, make sure you're hitting submit on that application. Because the second step is going to be your application status checklist. Now, if you apply directly on our website, you're going to hit submit and it's going to go directly to this page. Um, if you are on the Common App, 
it takes a little bit. So you're going to submit on the Common App about 24 to 48 hours after you submit, you're going to get an email from us with a link to access this page. Okay. So everyone will end up in the same place. Um, it might just, it just takes a few days for the common app data to come into our system. Now, this checklist is a customized list of next steps. Okay. So you're going to see your, all your information. You can see your major, um, what uh, application plan. So if you applied early action, you can see your residency status on here, all sorts of different things. The very, very bottom of this is a checklist. And so you'll see an X next to certain things. Those are things that we still need. Um, and then once we receive that item, it'll turn into a green check mark. And so your goal and that materials deadline that I talked about earlier is going to be to submit all of those items that are on your checklist, all green check marks by the materials deadline. Now, this is a customized list, like I mentioned, which means that based on the way that you answered certain questions on your application, your checklist might look different from your friend's checklist, okay? Um, and so there are four items that everyone is going to have to submit. Um, and those are those four items that you see in the center of your screen. So the first one is going to be your self-reported student academic record, SAR, SSAR, you'll hear it called a couple of different things. Um, but this is essentially you just telling us what classes you've taken and what grades you've received from ninth grade up through your senior schedule. Okay. Um, seniors will not have semester grades at this point when you're applying, but we do want to see what you're taking senior year. And we do take that into consideration in the application uh, review. So definitely tell us all of that. Um, we're also going to allow you to self-report your test scores. And so at FSU, we are test required. We do need at least one SAT, ACT, or CLT, which is the new standardized test available here in the state of Florida. Any of those three will work and we allow you to self-report. So again, instead of going to College Board or going to ACT and having them send us official scores, you just go onto your checklist, you click that item, tell us how many times you've taken the test and what your scores were. For both the SSAR and, <clears throat> excuse me, for both the SSAR and the self-reported test scores, I highly encourage you guys to get the, the documentation when you're submitting these, these um, items. And so instead of doing it from memory, make sure that you're working with your counselor um, to get a list of the classes you've taken and the grades that you've received um, and that you have like your score report from SAT when you're submitting that information. The reason for that is because we're gonna admit you guys based on the self-reported information that you put on your application but if you're admitted and you decide to come to FSU, we are going to ask you for all of the official stuff. And so it has to match exactly. Okay. Make sure that you are using that as a reference and that you are entering in um, everything exactly as it appears on your transcript or on your test report. The third item that everyone will have to submit is a first year resume or a list of activities. This is anything and everything that you do on your free time outside of the classroom. Okay, so this can be clubs, it can be sports, it can be a job, community service, um, all sorts of different things. A summer institute that you guys do um, through your program, that can all be included on there. Um, the Common App does have a section called activities. And if you submit that, that will come into our system as your resume. So you do not need to submit a separate resume as part of the application um, unless you want to but the list of activities in Common App will suffice um, as your resume. The last piece that is gonna be required of all students is gonna be that first year essay. And so this is the same personal statement that you will submit through the Common App. There's seven prompts, they're all on the Common App website. The last prompt is to write about whatever you want. And so it is very flexible, very open-ended in terms of topic, um, but all students will have to submit a first year essay as part of their application. And now those are the four items that everyone will have to submit. But as I mentioned, this is a customized list. And so there are certain questions on the application that could prompt additional things to populate on this checklist. So a couple of things. Um, the first thing that could uh, add some additional things to your checklist is your major selection. So if you are interested in dance, film, music, studio art, or theater, um, those are our performing arts programs. They require things like auditions and interviews and portfolios and all of that fun stuff. And so if you indicate one of those majors on your application, you'll have some additional items that will populate on that checklist specific to the program. The next supplemental information that might populate is through our honors college. 
Um, and so those of you that may be interested in being considered for our honors college, um, it is open to all majors. Uh, if you guys are interested in research, I highly recommend looking into our honors program. Um, it's going to give you a lot of really great access to research. Uh, as a first year student, you'll get honors only housing. Um, so prime location right in the center of campus um, is only for honors students. You'll get priority registration for your classes as well. Um, and then our honors program has these really wonderful honors signature courses um, that are really cool, um, kind of different types of courses that are offered um, from professors within that program. Um, so lots of benefits to being in honors. Um, I know a lot of you are interested in kind of that medical track, that pre-medical track. And we do house something called the honors medical scholars um, through our honors college. So the first step in that process is to apply to the general honors college and be admitted to the honors college. Um, and then there will be a separate application for the medical scholars if that's kind of the route that you wanna choose. Um, honors, the way that you tell us that you're interested, there is a question on the application that says, are you interested in honors? You mark yes to that. And then once you get to that checklist piece, you're gonna see um, some supplemental items on your checklist. Um, the last thing that will populate some additional things on your checklist is interest in the Care Summer Bridge program. So if you are the first in your family to go to college, um, and I'll talk in a second about what exactly first, first means for us at Florida State, um, but Care Summer Bridge is a wonderful uh, program that allows students to get some additional support, um, especially those who maybe didn't have parents who went through this process um, and need a little bit of extra help. Um, CARE has some really great financial assistance um, and then as well as like academic assistance, um, helping you uh, with your prof uh, professional and career goals, all of that good stuff. Um, so there's a question on the application that says, I'm interested in the CARE Summer Bridge program. You'll mark yes to that. And then you'll have some additional items populate on that checklist. All right, so let's talk a little bit about CARE. Um, like I mentioned, this is for first-generation college students. And so at FSU, we classify a first-generation college student um, as someone whose mom or dad did not earn a bachelor's degree or higher, okay? So a bachelor's degree is that four-year college degree. So if mom or dad started college but didn't finish, you are still first-generation. If mom or dad earned an associate's degree or a certificate, you are still considered first-generation. Um, if mom or dad earned a degree in another country and they cannot use it to work in that field here in the United States, you are considered first generation. Um, the other big question we get is siblings. So if you have, if mom or dad didn't go to college, but you have a sibling who's older than you, who has, is in college or who has graduated from college, um, you are still first generation. All of you guys are, um, all of your sibling group would be. So as long as mom or dad does not have that four-year degree or higher you would be eligible for um, our first generation support at Florida State. The Summer Bridge program starts in the summer term. So you would graduate from high school. You would have about a month or so, depending on when you graduate. And then you would come up to Tallahassee, usually at the end of June, for a seven week summer experience. Um, you're gonna come, you're gonna take two classes. You're gonna get connected with the other 350 to 400 CARE Summer Bridge students that come in. You guys all live together. Um, it's gonna help connect you with campus partners, um, and really just participate in all sorts of really fun activities that are going to, again, help you get connected on campus. All right. So the number one question that I get from students is, what do I need to do to apply or to get into Florida State? What do you guys look for in your applications? Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about how we review. So at Florida State, what we do is called a holistic admissions review. And basically all that means is that no one thing is going to guarantee you admission into Florida State. Um, we mirror our review um, to our university seal. So if you look at the seal of FSU, there are these three torches on it, and they are the Latin terms for strength, skill, and character. Um, that is kind of the overarching themes that we're looking for when we're evaluating your application for admission. So your strength piece is where the academics come in, right? We're going to look at things like GPA. We're going to look at things like test scores, but we're also going to take a deeper dive into the types of classes that you're taking, how difficult your schedule is. Um, we're going to look at your high school and see the types of things that are offered at your specific high school. So we want to know that you're taking advantage of the higher level coursework um, that is available to you. The second section we're gonna look at is your skill piece. And that is where your resume or your activities are gonna come in. 
Um, again, like I mentioned earlier, this can be clubs or sports, but it doesn't have to be. It can be a, a full-time job or a part-time job. It can be family responsibilities if you have those. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can spend your time doing. We understand that everybody's circumstances are different. We just want to know how you're balancing your time with school and whatever else you have to do. And then your last piece is going to be that character piece. That's where the essay comes in. Um, and really what I like to call this is kind of where you fill in the gaps, right, of who you are and kind of what we should know about you outside of your activities and outside of your grades. We know that you guys are so much more than that. Um, and so we want to use that essay to get to know a little bit more about you. Um, some students will talk about obstacles that they've overcome in their life. Some students will talk about um, goals that they have or specific things that they want to do. Um, it really is open-ended, and I know that that can be very terrifying for students, um, but I just really want you guys to think about what is it about me that I want this admissions person to know, um, and what is it that they wouldn't know by looking at the rest of my application. Um, all of those areas weigh the same for us, and so what I tell students is, is sometimes they'll say, well, I'm not a good test taker, and I have good grades, and I have activities, and my essay is fine, but like my test scores aren't great. Um, that is still a competitive application for us, okay? It's a balancing act between all of the different factors that we're looking at. And I always like to talk about that before we talk about this. Um, nothing on this screen, guys, is a requirement for admission at Florida State. What it is, is the middle 50% of the students who were offered admission from last year. So it gives you an idea in terms of GPA and test scores of kind of what's competitive for us. But it does not mean that if you're not within these ranges that you're not going to be offered admission. And if you're in these ranges, it doesn't mean that you're going to automatically be um, admitted. So think back to that last slide where that's really, this is really a third of the overall application review. The GPAs are recalculated. And so we will calculate them on a 5.0 scale. We'll give you additional weight for any advanced coursework. Um, so anything AP, IB, ACE, dual enrollment. Um, core classes, so your English, your math, your natural science, social science, and then world languages as well. Um, we'll count all of those classes. We'll give you an additional point of weight for any of those advanced courses. And then if you have like honors, pre-ACE, um, pre-AP, pre-IB, any of that stuff, um, you'll get a half a letter grade of extra weight. So we're going to recalculate all that stuff when you apply to us. Puts everybody on the same playing field because we know a lot of schools and things will weigh things differently. Um, and so we'll do that once you apply and submit your SAR. The SAT and the ACT scores are super scored. Um, basically what that means is that let's say that you take the SAT three times, you get your highest uh, reading score the first time, and you get your highest math score the third time. We'll take those two high scores and we'll put them together for you. Okay. And so that is going to benefit you. We encourage you to test several times if you can. Um, it is a myth that colleges don't want to see that you've taken the test a whole bunch of times. So test as much as you need to, to get those scores where you want them to be. Um, a little note on dual enrollment specifically. And so, like I mentioned, um, we obviously love to see college level coursework, um, from students. It's a great indicator of how successful you're going to be when you get to Florida state. Um, so we love to see that. And college level coursework can be AP level, it can be IB level, it can be ACE stuff, or it can be dual enrollment. Now, the main distinction between dual enrollment and all those other things that I just mentioned is that dual enrollment is actually starting your college GPA. Um, so that is different than AP or IB or classes like that, um, because those classes will come with you to Florida State. So if you're taking classes at a community college right now, taking a couple classes here or there, Let's say that, you know, something goes wrong, you get a poor grade, that grade's coming with you to FSU. So it is super, super important that you keep that in mind. Um, AP classes, IB classes, things that have that test at the end, we're really looking at just your grades in the classes and for admissions purposes. Um, you're not going to bring a GPA or you're not going to bring actual grades with you when you come to campus. Um, those classes are essentially that passing the, the test will allow for you to get the credit, um, but the GPA won't be impacted. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you are earning a Florida AA degree um, by the time that you graduate from high school, 
uh, you are still applying as a first time in college applicant. So that's a big question that we get quite a bit. Um, you'll still apply as a first year student. You'll get all those credits to bring with you, but um, we do want you to have the benefits of uh, first year students, whether it's scholarships or um, housing, things like that. So you will still apply as a first time in college student. All right, let's talk briefly about finances. Um, what you see on your screen is a breakdown of the in-state versus out-of-state tuition for one academic year. Um, that's going to include your fall and your spring classes. It does not include anything in the summer. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is that the top two numbers, so the tuition and fees that are listed at the top, are what you're actually paying to the university to be a student at FSU. Um, if you are eligible for the Bright Future Scholarship and you get that top 100% award, that is what will be covered. Everything else on this list is an estimate. So it's based on where you live and how much you eat and what you're studying and all of those things. So know that all of the other numbers on this list are flexible. Hmm, excuse me. Um, we do consider students for scholarships when they are applying to Florida State. Let's see if I have, yes, I do. Um, we're gonna automatically consider you for merit-based scholarships. And so merit-based scholarships are solely based on GPA and test scores. Um, we will look at you automatically. There's no additional application or anything like that. The most common one that our Florida students earn is called the Verus Scholarship. Um, it's a total award of $16,000 and it's spread out over four years. Um, so it's uh, $4,000 a year. And you can stack that on top of Bright Futures or Florida Prepaid or anything that you get from the FAFSA. Um, so you've got lots of opportunities there to, um, to add money for housing, dining, stuff like that. Um, if you are at a school that has an IB curriculum and you are earning an IB diploma, we also have a new um, scholarship specifically for that. It's an additional $8,000 and it's distributed over the four years. Um, so it's another $2,000 every year stackable on top of all of the other scholarships as well. The website at the bottom will show you all of our admissions website, uh, all of our admissions scholarships. Um, and so those are all of the different merit awards that we will consider students for upon admission. Living on campus at FSU is optional during your first year. We do encourage students to live on campus. It's a phenomenal way to meet people and get involved and in all of that good stuff. Um, you do have to be an admitted student in order to contract for housing. So again, that's a really big benefit um, in applying early and being admitted early so that if you do want to live on campus, you are able to have that space available to you. Um, FSU has 18 different residence halls. All of our freshman um, living facilities are suite style, meaning that you'll share a room similar to the one on your screen with one person. And then the two of you will share your bathroom with the people next door. So you'll have like your room, a bathroom, and then another room on the other side. Um, all of our residence halls have access to kitchens, um, quiet study spaces, and um, communal areas like living room type areas. Um, so you can absolutely take advantage of all of that regardless of where you live on campus. Um, dining at FSU, we are a small city. Uh, there are over 30 different dining locations on campus. So we have two all you care to eat uh, dining halls. It's like the buffet style. They serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And that menu changes every single day. Um, and then we also have your favorites from home, things like Starbucks and Chick-fil-A and all of that good stuff too. Um, Garnet and Go is our, our version of Uber Eats, if you will. And so it's like mobile ordering and things like that, which is really cool. If you do have any sort of um, allergies or dietary restrictions, we have a fully licensed nutritionist on staff um, who can meet with you to make sure that you know what is safe and kind of how you can navigate the dining pieces um, with those accommodations. Campus life. Um, this for me is what really sets FSU apart from all of the other large state schools here in Florida. We're a big state school. You're going to have opportunities and access to so many different types of things, but it doesn't feel like you're at a big school when you're here. Um, the community that is built on campus in Tallahassee is really, really special. Um, and I know that coming from me, uh, that seems biased, but I promise you it is. Um, we have over 750 different organizations, 
um, whether you're interested in intramural sports, whether you're interested in leadership organizations, um, pre-professional programs, um, whether you want to study abroad, we have four different study abroad centers. It's an FSU uh, facility with FSU faculty just somewhere else in the world. Um, so those are located in Valencia, Spain, in London, England, um, in Florence, Italy, and in um, the People's Republic of Panama in Central America. And you can choose to go to those, you know, at any point during your journey at FSU. Um, lots and lots of opportunities to get involved. Um, one of the things that I say is that our students are academically successful, but one of the reasons why we lean into that activities piece so much in your, um, in your application is because we want students to come and do well in the classroom, but we also want those students that are going to get out of, of their dorm rooms um, and get involved, um, because that really contributes to the community that we've built in Tallahassee. Last but not least, guys, come and see us if you haven't. Um, Tallahassee is a special place. Um, definitely come do a tour if you like. Uh, Visit.fsu.edu is where you'll go to register for those. Um, we do tours year round, Monday through Friday, and there's also some weekend availability in the spring and in the summer. Um, that same website will have a bunch of virtual offerings as well. So virtual um, campus tours, virtual presentations, all sorts of stuff. Um, so if you're not quite able to, to make it up to Tallahassee, um, you can still get a feel for what campus is like. And then I will leave you with my contact information. Um, I know we're going to open it up for questions now, but if you're like me and you're going to be, you know, sitting at work tomorrow and be like, oh, I should have asked that, um, please feel free to reach out. Uh, I know that this is a, a big and overwhelming process for a lot of students and there's a lot of boxes to check. Um, and so we're here for, for you. We're here to help um, wherever we can. Um, and please don't hesitate to reach out. That is all I've got for you guys this evening. Um, I know it was a ton of information, but I hope it was helpful. And thank you guys so much. Great. Thank you, Andrea. We really appreciate it. Yeah. So at this time, we will go ahead and open the chat for any questions. Just go ahead and type your question into the chat. And Celia and I will kind of piggyback off each other to ask the questions. Okay, I'll go first. Um, someone is asking, they're doing dual enrollment. Does admissions ignore their high school GPA or just focus on their college GPA? That's a really good question. Um, so we're gonna look at them both, right? So a lot of your dual enrollment classes will contribute to your high school GPA, right? So depending on the classes that you're taking, it might count as like an English class or a math class for high school. Um, so we're gonna look at your overall GPA. Um, and that is going to be including high school and dual enrollment. And then we're going to pull out the college coursework. So we're going to look at your dual enrollment GPA on its own. Um, I have another question. This one was directly messaged to me. Um, are you allowed to pick your own dorm mates if you wanted to contract with a specific person for on-campus living? Yeah. Um, so you both have to request each other. So you can't just request one person, but if you get with a friend and you both request each other, you can absolutely live together. Uh, and the next question, um, what aspects of a student stand out on the resume? So I'd say it's, I, I like quality over quantity um, would probably be my best piece of advice. Um, a lot of students, you know, if you've been doing something for quite some time, it shows commitment. Um, we're also going to ask you to tell us how much time you spend on that specific activity. So it's not necessarily that we want to see a certain type of activity, but we want to see commitment to something, um, you know, not just that you're part of 15 different clubs that meet once a month or, you know, once every two months or whatever. Um, holding leadership positions in those organizations is great. Um, involvement, you know, community service, helping out your community or different types of um, social justice type uh, organizations always are great. Um, but again, the extracurriculars, guys, that's the fun stuff. That's the things that you should really enjoy doing. And so we don't want to tell you what to do. Um, we just want you to find what what motivates you and what you're passionate about and and do those things. Uh, 
Uh, next question. If we are interested in applying for the honors program for early admissions, when is the deadline to submit the essay? Yes. So you're going to apply. You're going to submit the general application. Um, you can do the general application by October 15th, but the honors application is not due until December 1st. Um, so you can submit your early action stuff. You'll still get your general decision for the university, um, but honors will release all of their decisions in February with that regular decision group. Our next question goes right along with that. Um, do you know what they look for to be considered for the honors college and what makes a standout honors application? So I think similar to our review, um, honors does a very holistic review, okay? And so uh, the academic piece is important there, right? They want to know that you've been successful academically in high school because that's the greatest indicator that you will be academically successful in college. Um, so the academics are a big piece. Um, I'd also say commitment to or interest in research. That's a really big focus of our honors college here on campus. Um, and so if you're interested in a particular major or a particular area of research, definitely share that with them. Um, they have their own supplemental question um, that they'll ask you to answer when you apply directly to them. And I don't think it changed this year. I think it's similar to last year's where it's like, if you have to create a class, what class would you make and why? Um, and so I would find a way to squeeze in um, research interest. That's, that's, I think, a big thing for them. All right. This next question is about test scores. Can you confirm whether you have to send your official test scores from the ACT website to FSU? Not at this point. Um, so at this point in the process, you can self-report everything. Um, if you're offered admission and you decide to come, that's when we'll have you send the official stuff. I had a question uh, directly to me. If I took an AP course, but not the exam at the end of the course, does that affect my application negatively? Nope. Um, so we look at AP uh, classes in two different ways. When it comes to admission, we're just looking at the grade in the class. Okay. So how you did throughout the year in the class. Um, you can get straight A's and not take the test or fail the test. And that's gonna have no implication on your application. Um, the test is to determine if you get credit, okay? So if you get a three or higher on the AP exam, you'll get some college credit to bring with you. If you don't pass the exam or you don't take the exam, it's not gonna have any bearing on your admission. Um, next question, would dual enrollment at Suncoast Technical College count uh, for credits at FSU? So it'll depend on what you're taking. Um, a lot of the technical colleges, the classes are specific to like a trade or like a, a certain area. And so depending on the major that you have at FSU could determine whether it actually transfers over. Is there any specific programs or housing accommodations for students with disabilities such as IBS or IBD? Absolutely. Um, so I would highly recommend um, if you're offered admission and you decide to live on campus, reach out to our housing department, let them know um, what specific circumstances you have and kind of how they can help. And they will absolutely be accommodating. Next question. Are there any FSU campuses closer to Sarasota? So for undergraduate work, um, it's Tallahassee. Um, or Panama City, which is further away. So that doesn't help much. Um, but yeah, Tallahassee would be your only option for undergraduate stuff. Uh, I think we answered that, that next one. All right. Um, do you know how competitive the physician assistant program is? Ooh, um, I don't know specifics. Um, I will tell you that that's going to be that professional level program, right? So you won't go directly into the physician assistant program. You'll come in, um, you'll earn your bachelor's degree, uh, usually in a biology or in, in athletic training or something of that sort. Um, and then you'll apply into PA school at that point. Next question. Um, we did go over this shortly earlier, but what kind of documents do you need to be accepted into FSU? Yep. So the main ones are going to be your grades, right? We need to know your grades. We need to know test scores. So SAT, ACT, or CLT, your resume, and your essay. Um, those four items, along with your application, will get you a complete 
review. Okay, for, for, for first year students, do we get to choose if we want to take classes online instead of face-to-face -face, or are we automatically assigned some virtual classes? So no, no automatic assignment of virtual classes. Um, I will say that FSU really focuses on the in-person piece um, of your college experience. And so we do have some online classes, but they're kind of fewer and far between. Uh, the expectation is that you'll be on campus. Next question was directly messaged to me. What are some of the requirements for the Honors Medical Scholars Program, such as interviews, and uh, what features will stand out during the application, and when will decisions be released? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the first step in that process, you have to apply to the Honors College, and you have to be admitted to the Honors College. Um, so typically, um, that happens in February. You get to um, find out that, um, and then that's when the Honors Medical Scholars applications will open. I do believe they have an interview, um, but they'll be really, they'll be able to assist you at that point with like specifics and details, all of that. Um, I'd say the biggest piece would be like stuff like what you guys do, right? Your summer institute and different exposure to medical related programs, um, whether that's shadowing or volunteering or things like that. I feel like that's really what would set you apart for, for medical scholars. If anyone has any specific uh, questions about the Honors Medical Scholar Program, the information is on the website. And if you can't find it, sometimes it's a little bit hard to navigate through that College of Medicine website. Uh, just email me and I'll send you the direct link. Okay, next question. Um, all right, this is a good one. Can you elaborate on the process of being denied regu regular admission, but being accepted as a transfer? Will I wait a year before I apply as a transfer again? So applying as a transfer, so when you're in high school and you earn college credit, okay, so even if you get all the way to the AA degree in high school, okay, you will still apply as a first time in college student, okay? So it doesn't matter if you have an AA degree, it doesn't matter if you've taken one dual enrollment class, anything like that, you will apply as a first time in college student. Um, the differentiation comes when you, after you've graduated high school, once you've earned 12 credit hours, is when you can apply as a transfer student to FSU. So let's say that you apply to FSU as a freshman, you don't get admitted. Um, an option there is to start at a community college or to go to another institution, earn that AA degree, and then transfer into FSU. Um, that's gonna be the highest chances of being offered admission. Um, you can technically do your 12 credit hours. So take one semester of classes somewhere else and then apply as a transfer student to FSU. But at that point, you're still going to have to submit all of the same stuff that you had to submit as a freshman. Um, and if you weren't successful as a freshman, it's not super likely that there's going to be enough new information for that decision to change. Um, so that would be my recommendation is to go for the AA degree. Once you get that AA degree, we're no longer looking at anything from high school. We're only looking at those two years of college um, and looking at how you did in those courses. We won't even consider test scores at that point. There's no essay or anything like that. So it becomes a lot easier. Um, a student messaged me asking if they could submit their application November 1st and wait um, to take their tests again to update it. And if I'm not mistaken, the scores deadline for regular decision is January 1st. Mm -hmm. So you can wait to keep retaking the test to submit your best scores after already submitting your application. Exactly. So we need one set of scores by the materials deadline, but you can update those scores all the way until January 1st. Okay, next question. Uh, if you finish your undergraduate at FSU and want to apply to a graduate program at FSU again, does your previous admission at FSU help boost your college application for graduate school? I think the benefit of that is that you're probably, you've probably worked with some of the professors in the graduate programs. You've had opportunities to network with them. They know who you are. Um, and so I think that could definitely help. Um, but just in and of itself, having the degree from FSU isn't isn't gonna gonna add anything additional. Um, but being on campus, I think, is helpful. Um, a student asks me, does she need to be a U.S. citizen to be accepted, or does she just need her social security number? 
Yep. Um, so we uh, we asked some questions on the application, but you do not have to be a U.S. citizen um, or even a resident to apply. Um, if you mark that you are a resident of another country or, you know, a citizen of another country, um, we may ask some additional questions to determine, you know, where you went to school and all of that. But if you're going to high school here in the United States or in the state of Florida, um, usually you'll be able to apply just like everybody else. Next question, how does FSU help students find internships or job opportunities in their field? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so our career center is award-winning. Um, they are gonna come to you at orientation. So your first step on campus um, as a new student, you will hear from the career center and they are gonna have all sorts of different programming throughout the, the year um, to help get you connected to internships. Um, they'll bring uh, different partners and things like that onto campus. Um, to get you that that exposure as well. Um, they'll help you prepare for interviews. They have a clothing closet if you need professional clothes to go on interviews. Um, they, they've got you covered. Um, a student asks me, is she able to apply to FSU if she only has an ITIN number? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, the only thing outside of, if, if you're not a citizen or a resident, you're not able to... Um, to get any of the federal funding. So like anything through the FAFSA, um, you have to be a citizen or a resident resident to get that type of funding. Um, but in terms of applying, you can apply um, and you're eligible for all of the merit-based aid. So all of the like GPA test score type aid that we offer, um, that's not specific to citizens or residents. Does participating in any of the STRIDE programs provide any type of advantage uh, during the admissions process? I would definitely recommend putting that um, as part of your activities. Um, it just shows that you're involved in kind of career oriented programming. Um, it's gonna boost up that that uh, skill piece of your um, application review. Um, and then it, it just, it shows people that you, you know, kind of you have a, a path and you know what it is that you wanna do when you're in college. And so, yes, it, it would be really beneficial. Student messaged me, um, heard that, I heard from FSU college representatives that your major will be declared in your at FSU. If so, how will we make sure that our intended major requirements are met? Um, so really the way most programs outside of those like five performing arts programs that I mentioned earlier, the way most of the programs work at Florida State is that you will have two years of general education um, very similar to what you're doing right now in high school. So your English, your math, you know, sciences, things like that. You'll take some electives based on, you know, your areas of interest, but really your like major specific work starts in that junior year. And so you're going to come in, you're going to do your 60 credits of general education. Um, and then as long as you have the prerequisites for your major and all of that, you're able to pretty seamlessly move into like your official major. Okay. Uh, how are the class sizes? So currently, um, our averages are 17 to 1. That does not mean that every class will only have 17 students. Um, but about 85% of our classes at Florida State have 40 or less. So we have made a really, really conscious effort over the past few years to hire uh, more faculty, to increase the sections of classes. Um, when you do have one of those larger lecture style type classes, um, you will have a separate meeting every week um, in a smaller breakout group so that you can ask those questions um, and have more of that one-on-one -on -one interaction. Um, so we, we've definitely been been trying to make it as as uh, as one-on-one, um, -on -one, as individualized as possible with a student population the size of ours. One student is asking um, how would they pay for tuition monthly or would they be paying per semester? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so you will, essentially what happens is any financial aid, so anything that you're getting from the FAFSA, anything that you get through Bright Futures, any outside scholarships, prepaid, all of that stuff, will basically pay into your university account. Um, and then that will go towards your tuition first. If there's any money left over, you're able to use that towards your housing or um, your food or any additional expenses that you have. But if you do have a balance, um, there will be like a day that you'll have to pay it for just the semester. Um, so you'll you'll pay per semester. 
Um, but please reach out to our financial aid office if there's ever an issue with that. They can definitely work with you on like payment plans or different ways um, to make sure that you're able to, to make those payments. Great. Andrea, I just want to say this has been absolutely wonderful so far. And to everyone on the call, we have about five minutes left. So please get your last questions in the chat. Again, a reminder, if we end and we have not answered your question, feel free to email them to me and I can compile, compile a list and get it to Andrea and then get it back, to, back out to everybody. Okay, next question. When do test scores for scholarship purposes have to be submitted? Is it by the application deadline or is there another deadline? So for our merit-based scholarships, so the ones that we're gonna automatically consider you for, it's that same test deadline. So as long as we've got them by um, your test deadline, you're good to go for us. Um, and yeah, really, I that's, yeah. Next question was, how many students are picked for the Honors Medical Scholars Program? Mm. Jody, do you know that number? Um, it's different every single year, and it's it's a small number. It's between yeah. 10 and 15, I believe. It's It's a very small number. But there's lots of additional opportunities to get involved. And so if you're not successful with that, definitely look into like our, um, our Europe program our undergraduate research opportunity program on campus. It's a really great way to get involved with faculty and get that experience and that exposure. Um, so that's not the only way uh, to get that, that experience in. Yeah, absolutely. All right, next question. Um, for many of us that live in underprivileged communities who want to increase their resume for the honors college, what are some things that we can do if we lack access to things like internship, shadowing, research in small towns? Tell us those things. Um, find a way to work that into either your essay, your personal statement. Um, the Common App has a section that has like, is there any additional information that you want us to know? Um, and so being part of organizations like this um, allows you again to get some form of experience. But if you want to acknowledge the fact that like I've, I would love to have done extra things, but because of the community that I live in or because of my circumstances, I haven't been able to tell us that. We will absolutely consider that when we're looking at your application. Next question is, will there be any guidance in terms of research or other opportunities if someone wants to pursue medicine after undergrad? Absolutely. Um, you want to do research at Florida State, there will be somebody to help you do research at Florida State. So whether it's through Europe, um, we have directed independent study through all of our different um, majors. So every single major will allow you to work on um, different projects that are happening within the department. Um, you, If you want to do research at Florida State, you will have access to it. Absolutely. Uh, the next question is, uh, as a student graduating with an AA degree, if we get denied regular admission, are we automatically put in into the consideration for a transfer? Yeah, this is a really good question. Um, so this actually changed last year. Um, so there's this new statute in the state of Florida um, that basically says you will, if you have an AA degree at the same time that you get your high school diploma. So it has to be at the same time. Can't be one semester different. Can't be anything like that. You have to graduate high school with the AA and the diploma at the same time. But if you do that, you're going to apply to us as a first time in college student. If we're not able to offer you admission as a first time in college student, we're automatically going to consider you for that transfer process anyways. Um, and so we'll make sure that on your application, you're indicating that you're going to earn that AA degree that allows us to send you that additional documentation and, you know, all of the additional stuff that we'll need from you. Um, but that's going to be an automatic process for us if you're earning that AA degree at the same time. Um, I'm not sure if we, I can't recall if we answered this question earlier, but somebody asked, um, what are the class sizes like? Yeah, um, I'd say about 85% of our classes have 40 or less students in. So not a ton. You will still have some of those big lectures, um, but we always kind of pair that with a, a smaller meeting as well. So yeah, I don't know if you have any other questions, but I have three here that are direct messaged right to me. So I'm going to go ahead and ask some of those. Uh, what if I took my SAT ninth grade year, but the application is due before the new scores come out? Mm. So what you took the ninth grade year, 
was a, um, it's not, you can't use that for college admissions. Um, so the earliest that you can test for the college admission piece is junior year. Um, if you haven't taken a test in junior year, and so you're still waiting to test like maybe in October, I think most of the high schools do it in October. Um, I would say to either hold off and apply to that regular decision group. Um, so have everything in by December 1st, you'll have your score by then and you can self-report it that way. Uh, what is the required minimum ACT or SAT score for um, a bachelor's degree through MD? Um, there's no, so to be admitted to FSU, there is no minimum score. Um, those averages that I showed you earlier are the middle 50. So that kind of gives you an idea about admission. Um, but again, that's just one factor that we look at. Um, we do expect that students are scoring high enough to be considered college level. Um, so as long as your scores are meeting those college minimums, um, that's, there's no actual, you know, cutoff in terms of scores. And um, can you talk a little bit about the essay? Um, is there a question about like a passion project, which might be a trend, or is there something that you guys like to hear about or don't like to hear about <laughs> on the essays? Um, so I think the biggest thing is, is make sure that the essay is about you, right? So if you have a passion project, if you have something that you're really committed to or a hobby or an interest that you really like, and you want to share that with us, absolutely. Um, always bring it back to why it's important for us to know that, right? And so we'll read a lot of essays that are really good stories, right? They're telling us a really good story, but like, it's not super applicable to anything that we would be looking at or considering in terms of college admission. Um, so that's a really big piece. Like, tell us whatever you want, tell us whatever story, but bring it back to like, why is it important for us to know that? Or how has that made you into the person that you are? Um, make sure that it is about you. I read a lot of essays about grandmothers that I would love to admit to college, um, but we're not admitting grandma to college. We're admitting you to college. Um, so tell us about grandma. You can absolutely write about somebody who's been you know, influential or impactful in your life, but again, bring it back to you. Why, is that, how, why has that been important for you and how has that made you into the person that you are? Um, we get lots of essays about goals and aspirations. Um, we get essays about obstacles that you've overcome in your life. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that there's like a specific topic that I'm like, don't write about that. Um, because I think that if it's, if it's important for you and if you feel like we need to know this information, um, I want you to be able to share it with us. Um, I will say probably the most common essay that I read is about sports injuries um, so people getting hurt in a sport and that kind of changes their mind and their outlook on their lives. Um, I've read some really good ones, so it's not an absolute no, but just keep that in mind is that we read thousands of essays every year and you really want your essay to be something that we're going to be able to remember. Um, and, and the sports essays are sometimes a little bit redundant, but, um, yeah, that would, that would be my advice for the essay. Well, we've run out of time, and I just want to say how grateful I am to you, Andrea, for being here, and how grateful I am for everyone on this meeting. It's been a great call. We've had some amazing questions. I think we all can say that we've probably learned something here tonight. I also want to mention, um, I know it's sometimes it's easier just to ask a question and get someone to answer it, but I encourage all of you to go to that, admis that FSU admissions page that first year. It has an overabundance of information. Even if you're looking for one thing, I guarantee you'll probably learn about five or six other things while you're looking on it. It's one of the best first year admissions websites that I've seen in any colleges. So um, I encourage you to do that. If you did not get your question answered, go ahead and email it to me. And um, if you have any other questions or need any other help, if you're a stride student, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to help. So thank you all for coming and talk to you again soon. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you, Andrea. You're welcome. Have a great night. Thank you, too.